Hello guys, this is Marshall visiting today from the Event Horizon X to help Putty out with a Let's Play in review. Today's review isn't for an entire Let's Play, this is for the New Vegas DLC Dead Money, which Putty recently completed in his Fallout New Vegas Let's Play. Note that this script was written by Putty, and therefore the opinions shared are not of my own, although they may be quite similar. Fallout Dead Money is the first piece of downloadable content for Fallout New Vegas. When it was first released, Microsoft held a limited time exclusivity deal. It was released on December 21, 2010 on the Xbox 360 Marketplace, and on February 22, 2011 on the other platforms. The download expanded the level cap of the game by 5, to give the game a total level cap of 35. It also added a few new perks. The name of the DLC is based on a gambling term. Money that is dead is money that you have put into the pot. The recommended level for taking on this DLC is level 20. The DLC is set in and around the Sierra Madre Casino. Although a lot of the DLC takes place in the surrounding villa, the Madre is the main focus of the story. The casino's name is based on a novel and film by the name of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. The setting is very dark and confined. This leads to some frustration when later combined with the gameplay as you feel very cramped and annoyed. It is this atmosphere that the DLC creates that made some people, including myself, deal dislike the DLC on day one. However, I believe the atmosphere creates a fantastic backdrop for the type of story that is told. Overall, I think the setting is adverse to the player's enjoyment of the gameplay, but adds to the experience of the DLC. Gameplay-wise, this DLC introduced a variety of mechanics that annoyed many players. First of all, the range of enemies in this adventure is awful, with a few minor variations. There are two types of enemies, ghost people and holograms. This is a massive problem as the monotony of killing the same enemy over and over again gets boring fast, and to the fact that the ghost people will revive if not mutilated, and the combat gets very repetitive fast. Secondly, there are speakers all over the villa, and in certain points throughout the Madre. These speakers interfere with your bomb caller and start a timer that will lead to an insta-death consequence unless you get away from the speaker or destroy it. This is, in my opinion, the least annoying new mechanic. Insta-death is pretty harsh in Fallout, but it's not that hard to deal with the speakers. Finally, the cloud. This is a dark, red smog caused by certain events in the Madre's past. If you walk into the cloud, it will instantly start to damage you, at a pretty decent rate. In general, it's easy enough to avoid the fog, but there are certain times you will be forced to run through it, and if you are not careful, you could end up losing a lot of health, rapidly. I personally don't mind this, as it adds a reasonable challenge to the gameplay, but I can see how it might annoy some people. The companions are pretty useful, their perks are just suited to certain aspects of the DLC, and that adds a certain level of strategy to the gameplay depending on what companion you pick. In general though, it's a typical Game Bro Fallout game. Lots of looting, lots of reading, lots of talking, and a bit of combat here and there. I don't think the gameplay mechanics ruin the Fallout feel, but I do think they add to frustration of the player. This frustration will very much put off mechanics focused gamers, but for people diving deep for the story, puts them in just the right mindset to hear the tale. There are a limited amount of characters in Dead Money, but they are all amazing. Father Elijah is an engaging antagonist, and it's delightful to be able to put a face to a figure mentioned quite a bit through the main game. His story is interesting, and it's good to see another perspective on the conflict in the Mojave. Linking in with Elijah is Christine, another character mentioned in the main game if you dig deep enough, but not by name. It's great to see some flavor text added as background to a companion in New Vegas to be fleshed out with physical appearances by the characters mentioned. Christine herself is a fantastic character, giving you someone you sympathize with and want to protect at the beginning of the DLC before showing her power and badassery by the end of it. Dean Domino is a character not talked about in the main game, but he is shown in a number of posters throughout the wasteland and in some loading screens. This is showing that he is a part of the old world history of the game, and it is very rare that we get to meet characters like this. As a character, he's simply brilliant, seeming very charismatic and likable throughout the first phase of the DLC. Then once you learn of his whole story, you can see a dark and maniacal twist. He is the lovable twi type of evil. I must mention the voice actor, Barry Denon, who does a simply superb job. 
Charismatic, lovely, charming, manipulative, and dirty, all with a brilliant, ghoulish undertone. His range is superb, and the character he is able to create just with his voice is unbelievable. He is actually one of the best voice actors I've ever heard, and it's incredible that, to me, me that his That's other work is extremely I've limited. Missed a rapt audience. Just because I work in entertainment doesn't mean I'm a moron. I heard my necktie beeping. I know what that means. I'm part of this somehow. I want out of this contract. As if I had a choice. Sometimes instinct takes over, and that's when I go into the cage. It's like curiosity that way. Dog can see the voice. Looks just like dog. And dog looks just like me. We could go on to talk about characters that don't actually appear in the DLC, but enough information is given to piece together their personality and actions, so I think I've said enough on this topic. You didn't make it any easier. For what it's worth, I'm glad you told me yourself, and I understood the tapes he had in his possession. I do not think either of you realized what, uh, what your addiction stemmed from. However, and, this is the, and that is the tragedy in this, I suspect the world would not have believed you regardless so I respect your desire to keep it from others. The story is very strong in this DLC. I do think this is amplified by the amazing characters of the DLC, but I also believe the base stories are strong enough to keep you interested. First, there's the story of the Madre's construction, where you get to uncover the problems and conspiracies of the story. This adds to the overall atmosphere of the DLC and gives more backstory to the setting. Next is the story behind Elijah and Christine, which ties to some side stories in the main game, most having to do with the Brotherhood of Steel. As stated earlier, this just lets you flesh out any interest you had in this side story. Finally is the story between Domino and Sinclair. This is by far my favorite story in the DLC. It goes so deep, involves so many incredible themes and plot twists, that it would be absolutely a disservice to spoil any of it here. Please check out either my or Putty's LP of the DLC to learn it, or better yet, play the DLC yourselves. In conclusion, the gameplay and atmosphere of this DLC really brings it down. Mechanics-focused gamers will not enjoy this piece of content, the gameplay is repetitive and annoying, and the atmosphere makes you feel even more annoyed. However, it is that same atmosphere that allows Dead Money to tell a great story through some stellar characters. I give this piece of downloadable content a 6 out of 10. That's all. I came on because I love this DLC, and also because Putty recently came on my channel to voice over a review of Deus Ex Human Revolution, so check it out. Peace soup!